Hello learners, this is teacher Rojab and here today we are going to look at sources of information on history and government and specifically on linguistic and anthropology. This is a Lingu TV, a station where you watch and learn. Now learners, last lesson we did introduce on the forms of unwritten source uh, and written source as a source of information on history and government. And we did introduce on oral tradition as an example of unwritten form. And now today we're going to look at linguistic and anthropology. But again, at the end of the topic, or rather at the end of the lesson, what do we learners expect? One, you'll be able to state the sources of information on history and government. And also, we need to state some of the advantages and limitations of the sources of information on history and government. In this case here, yeah, I mean linguistic and anthropology. Now, let us get to understand what is this linguistic? What is this anthropology? So let us begin from linguistic. What is linguistic? From our understanding, it is language, right? Now, linguistic refers to the scientific study of language. And now you might be worried, what is that scientific study of language? How can you study language? All it means here, for example, I can go to the Portuguese, right? That urge of wanting to know to speak Portuguese. That's what we call linguistic, right? You can also go to a country that speaks uh, Spanish. Good. In that case, that urge of you wanting to speak Spanish is what we call linguistic. You, wa you want to learn language. You want to learn a new language, how it developed how and how it is growing. And for example, we had linguistics who, who did study uh, the development, origin, development of, of, of the Kiswahili, of the Kiswahili language. And it took a number of years getting to study how Kiswahili language as a language originated, where it originated from and how it has developed to date. And now having looked at what ling uh, linguistic is, I want us to look at what are some of the advantages of linguistic. One, it gives information about the movement of people and their relations. For example, I've given you a good example of wanting to study the Kiswahili language. Those people who had to study the Kiswahili language, remember, they had to go to its origin. Who are the people who speak Swahili, right? Where did they come from? And how do they migrate? All those. So in that case, we get to study about the inform we get to study about the movement of people and their relations. How do they relate with that language? And also, another advantage of linguistic is that linguistic helps us to uh, communicate better. And I've given you a good example. If you want to go to Spanish, you don't know how to speak Spanish, right? In that case, you'll want to learn Spanish for you to communicate better because you can't just be that. You need to communicate with people. You need services. They need your services. So in that case, linguistic helps us to understand communication better. Now, another advantage is that linguistic helps, is, is useful in the dating of migration of people. In that case, when you get to study the origin, when did that language originate? Through that, you'll get to know when those people migrated. Let us look at limitations of, of linguistic. Linguistic as a, as a study also has got limitations. For example, it is time consuming. T take for example, wanting to study a new language. It will take you time. You'll need to take much of your time studying that language. And finally, different languages may have similar words. With different meanings, this brings confusion. For example, what terms, let us use, let us use the, 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 for example, a term of a, a cow, right? To you, a cow might, might mean an animal, but for different people, it might mean a totally different thing. Now, these similar words, these similar words bring out different meaning, and this mostly brings about con confusion. Having looked at linguistic, let us look at another example of oral tradition, which is anthropology. What is this anthropology? Now, this is the study of human beings, their origin, their uh, development, their so, uh, social relation and their beliefs. It is ba basically how people live, right? How people interact in a society, their cultural beliefs, right? Their language, their economic activities, how are they organized politically? That is what it simply means by anthropology, getting to study the beliefs of people, the social life of people, 
the cultural lives of people, the political organization of those people. That is what it means by anthropology. Now, what are some of these advantages of anthropology? And one thing I've, I, I, I've not noted is that we have got people who get to study the beliefs of people. And in this case here, people go to a certain community, get to live with the people, not for two days, not for three days. They get to live with people for years. Remember, you cannot just be in, in, a, in a place and get to study people in, in a few days. You must have to be with those people. So it took time. So the anthropologists could go, settle in a certain place, study the people, get to know their, 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 their religious beliefs, get to, get, get to know their cultural beliefs, get to know their social setup. So it took much time for the anthropologists to get to study their cultural beliefs of people. Now let us get to look at the advantages of anthropology. One, it enables historians to determine the cultural past of a community, right? For example, you are going to the people living in Zimbabwe, right? The Khoisan and the Sun. So when you get to study those people, you'll get to determine their cultural past. How do they live? How do they communicate? What kind of foods they eat? And also, information is easily obtained from the surrounding, right? It is cheap in that case. Not, not really cheap, but uh, information is, is easily obtained from the surrounding. Meaning, in this case, you need to ask people how they lived, right? What are, what are some of the beliefs of the people? So information you can readily get from, from the people. Then finally, it complements other sources, right? And like these other uh, sources that takes my, um, requires more, more skills, more personnel, this anthropology complements other sources of information. However, anthropology had its limitations. For example, it is expensive. Can you get to think of someone getting to live in a community? You need to eat, you need to travel, you need your upkeep, right? And you're not going there for two days or three days. You are going there for more time. In that case, you'll have to spend much money. Then also, it's time consuming. And as I've, told, I've already said that earlier, that it will need you to be with those people for a long time for you to understand them. And finally, the researcher may find it difficult to adapt fully to the environment. For example, you are from a, a, a cool environment, right? Then you are, go, you, you, are, you are taken to an environment that is very hot. You, you, you know, you can see uh, adapting to that environment is quite, is quite difficult. Having looked at linguistic, having looked at anthropology, now, I, will, I want you people to try this assignment for you. Can you define what anthropology is? And also get to state some of the advantages and limitations of using anthropology as a source of information. For more research and for more points, can you kindly get to refer to Evolving World History Form 2, the sixth edition. And as always, get to watch your favorite learning channel, which is Elim TV where we watch and learn.